Number 47. A certain man has a mass of 80 kilograms and a density of 955 kilogram per cubic meter, excluding the air in his lungs. Calculate his volume. All right, so letter A, it says to calculate his volume. This is pretty straightforward. I mean, all we have to do is use the um, uh, density equation over here. So it says that the, that the density of the man, it will be equal to the mass of the man divided by the volume of the man. And if we're asked to calculate the volume, all we have to do is mathematically manipulate this so that the volume of the man will equal the mass of the man divided by the density of the man. Okay, so here it is. Just plug it in. Simple. Uh, so the volume of the man will simply be his mass. Now, the only thing you got to remember here is when you plug in the values, make sure that the units are consistent, right? So that the mass unit in your density is the same as the mass unit of your mass, all right? Um, so, and they are, so we can do this division and then just recognize what value will get spit out in terms of volume, it's in cubic meters. So it's going to be 80 divided by 955. So this works out to be about 0 0.084. Should be two sig figs, I think, here because 80 has two. Well, there's no decimal, so it might actually have one, but whatever. Um, so here is the volume, and this is in terms of cubic meters. All right. Now that is then the answer. You might need it in cubic centimeters, milliliters, liters, I don't know. But this is definitely an answer. So we are good there. Uh, and it doesn't ask us specifically what value to calculate. So uh, letter B. Oops, one second. Let, eh, why don't we make this a little more colorful? Letter B. Uh, <clears throat> it says find the buoyant force air exerts on him. So we have to remember this, that the, the basic idea here is that the buoyant force acting on an object, acting on an object, is equal to the weight of the fluid. So I'll say weight of the fluid that was displaced by that object. All right. So pretend you have so pretend you have a room. Okay? And this room is filled with air. Okay? Now, um well, how do I want to Yeah, let, let let's pretend the yeah, well, let's actually pretend that this room has a certain it's easier if I do this. Pretend that there's a certain level to the air in the room, kind of like if it were water in a tank, okay? Just pretend that there's a certain level to the air in the room. And What's going to happen is if we take our man, okay, let's say originally the, you know, the height of the room is located here. If we take the man and he then walks into the room, the, his volume, whatever his volume is, if he walks into this room, has to then be displaced by the volume of the air. So the volume of air has to go up, okay? Because the total volume of this whole container has to be equal. All right. Uh, what do I mean by equal? I mean, it has to, it's basically the sum total of the volume of the water and now plus the volume of the man's body. So if we were to think about that, right, just moving him maybe back one step, as this man walks into the room, okay, his volume displaces a certain volume of air upward. Okay. So in terms of, I'll leave the height now of the, of the air there. And what I'm highlighting here is now that volume. Okay. This represents the volume now, volume of air displaced. That should make sense, all right? And this volume of air displaced, assuming that the man is completely submerged in the air, I mean, which he is, right? We're all submerged in the air right now. Oh, I'm drowning in air. Um, so we can realize, we can create the formula here that we have the volume of the air will be equal to the volume of uh, the man, okay? That should be true. So now what I need to do is I need to somehow, in order to find the buoyant force on the man, okay, I need to know the weight of the fluid that was displaced. Now the fluid in this problem is air. So being a little more specific, the buoyant force acting on the man is going to be equal to the weight of the air displaced. Okay, so how do we find weight of the air? Well, let's just think, what's weight? It's basically mg, right? So the buoyant force on the man will simply be equal to then the mass of the air that was displaced multiplied by gravity. That's pretty straightforward. But now how do we find the mass of the air? Well, you should know, I mean, you might not have to memorize it, but you should be doing enough practice where you are, uh, memorizing it vicariously essentially. So we, we know that the density of air is going to be equal to 1.29 times 10 to the third gram 
per milliliter. Or you can write this in terms of which I would suggest using one, uh, 1.29 kilogram per cubic meter. This one would be preferred to use because we have G in here and whatever. So it, it, it would be, it, plus we want the answer in Newton. So we got to use the standard new, uh, units. So what we, what we now come to realize is I don't know the mass of the air directly, right? But I do know that the volume of the air that was displaced has to equal the volume of the man. And we did just find the volume of the man before, didn't we over here? So if I know the volume of the man, which is this, that means I also know the volume of the air. And wait a minute, if I know the volume of the air and I know the density of the air, how is volume and density related? Oh, there's the equation, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this thing for mass. So we have the mass of air will be equal to then the density of air multiplied by the volume of the air. Okay, so let me take this and plug it on into my equation now. All right, so the buoyant force on the man will be equal to the density of the air, whoops, the density of the air uh, multiplied by the volume of the air that was displaced multiplied by gravity. Now remember this relationship because we don't, I mean, we do know that the, we do know the volume of air. It's equal to the volume of the man. But instead, since I already calculated the volume of the man over here, I'm just going to take that and plug it into the equation. All right. So we have the buoyant force then on the man is equal to the density of the fluid that was displaced, which is the air, multiplied by the volume of the object that is being submerged, which is the man, multiplied by gravity. This is it right here at the bottom. Please rewind that and play it a few times. All right. That's exactly how you want to memorize this particular equation. Or I shouldn't say memorize. Understand the particular equation. All right. And you should also be noticing some patterns from all the problems we've been doing. So now all I need to do is just plug it in. Right. I can find the buoyant force. So the buoyant force here. So the buoyant force on the man is equal to the density of air, which we found to be 1.29. And I'm using the kilogram per cubic meter value multiplied by the volume of the man, okay, so 0 0.084, and actually, what was the exact value? It was, I'm going to, in terms of my calculations, I'm going to use the more exact value, all right, but uh, what I'm going to plug in here is 0 0.84, but I'm going to use the 0 0.083769, etc., and then multiply that by gravity, which is 9.8, so here we realize that the buoyant force will simply be, so 1.29 times that value times 9.8. So 1.059, or uh, if we round, uh, what do we need? We need actually like two. We really should, we really should be, ha well, how many sig figs here? We actually should be using two. So really it should be 1.0, uh, excuse me, 1.1. I hate using two sig figs though. And also, by the way, this might even be one sig fig since they didn't use a decimal. So anyway, I don't really care about sig figs. So I'm just going to, I'm going to give you a little more exact here. 1.06, okay. 1.06, and that is in terms of Newtons. That'll be the buoyant force. And, okay, great. Now, um, letter C, I'm going to do it up on the upper left. It says, uh, what is the ratio of the buoyant force to his weight? So ratio of the buoyant force to his weight. So that means you got to take the buoyant force and divide it by his weight to find the ratio. So the buoyant force, again, was 1.06. I'll probably use the more exact value in the calculator and divide that by his weight, which is his mass of 80 kilograms. Come on, there we go. His mass of 80 kilograms multiplied by 9.8. And what do we get here? And divide that by now 80 times 9.8. So, I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's a small, small, small fraction, right? It's basically, in terms of fractional value, it's point, uh, excuse me, it's 1.35 times 10 to the, 1, 2, 3, minus 3. All right, that's the ratio. In terms of a percentage, this is equal to 0.1135%. I mean, it's basically nothing, right? So in terms of, you know, doing calculations of whatnot as far as masses of objects and whatever, 
You know how we do calculations for a mass of an object and it's sitting in air? We never take into account the buoyant force of the air, even though in theory, theoretically, we should. Okay, because that will affect the, the mass of, of the uh, objects. Um, yeah, that, that will, sorry, I was going to say the object's body, but I'm using the term object. That will affect the mass of the object. Uh, however, though, if you notice here, for a lot of things, right, the buoyant force is relatively insignificant. Um, so we, we can kind of disregard it in most calculations. All right. But anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. That would be so much appreciated. We appreciate it very much. We do hope we're providing a lot of value to you guys. And uh, we hope you're doing well in your course. Take care.